When I introduced my video on how to build an efficient 2x1 starter base, I considered it to be a filler between main base videos. Your overwhelming response showed me that there's a real need to see how to build those tried and true standard bases. Today, I'll walk you through building an efficient version of the other most popular starter base, the 2x2. The 2x2 gets its name from the fact that the basis of it is a 2x2 grid of square foundations. The design I am presenting today is meant as a starter base. No exploits such as stability bunkers or vanishing loot, just a simple and efficient starter base that can be built in tiny increments. It features an airlock with windows to all sides, a utility space, secondary loot room with four large boxes, three furnaces, three sleeping bags and a workbench, and a main loot room with five large boxes and the TC. Once you obtain three garage doors, the main loot room is protected from 12 rockets or 600 explosive ammo. At the same time, the base is cheap to build and to maintain. I used only the minimal set of upgrades on the honeycomb necessary to maintain that 12 rockets worth of protection to keep cost and upkeep down. To maintain the base, it takes just one metal and two stone nodes per day. If you were to buy those materials at Outpost, this would be just 164.5 scrap per day, which makes it roughly 14 scrap for each rocket it is protected from. Funnily, this makes it one of the most efficient bases in terms of cost to protection ratio on my channel. Before we jump into the build, let's talk about 2x2s in general. Many 2x2s I see, for example in videos, look like this. An open 2x2 space with a triangle airlock. This is an easy 8 satchel or 2 rocket raid. A very common way to extend the 2x2 is to add one layer of honeycomb and move the airlock to the side, adding two more doors. A door raid is now 16 satchels or 4 rockets, which is okay, but not great. The main problem remains. Once raiders enter the main 2x2, they have access to all items. Further, it requires you to farm enough material with your rock to build the whole structure from scratch. One thing I tried to argue in my video on the 2x1 is, start small. As back then, we start with a 1x1 with a wooden double door. The TC should go into the left corner, rotate it sideways. Fill the 1x1 temporarily with your sleeping bags and a few small boxes. As said in the 2x1 video, don't be afraid to use wood temporarily and upgrade parts to stone whenever you farm the node. Then, extend the build into a 2x1 with a double door on the same side as the TC. Place three furnaces on the opposite side and start smelting. Use the metal fragments to replace all doors with sheet metal doors. Build a workbench that goes next to the door and start crafting large boxes. Clear out the one by one to build the main loot room. For the box placement, we use the strategy that I presented in my hyper-efficient loot room design tutorial. The boxes need to be perfectly aligned for this design to work. Watch the tutorial in case you want to learn how to do that easily. The link is in the description. Please note that sometimes it can help to upgrade the double door frame to sheet metal or to leave it wood when placing those boxes. Having the TC on the left hand side makes it easier to access it. You should be able to fit three sleeping bags in before replacing the double door. Remember that you can always hatchet out the tier 1 workbench and replace it with a tier 2 workbench if you desire. Now that the 2x1 is done, it's time to extend the base into a 2x2. As you can already start to see, the inner part won't be as open as the easy to rate examples that I showed you earlier. Instead, we will compartmentalize the inner 2x2. Two two. There are two main strategies to do that. One strategy is to create a set of doorways forming a U-shape. 
This is the safest design as it allows to put another three doors between the airlock and the main loot room. This shape can either be upside down or sideways, depending on how you continue after the first door. Another strategy is to create an F shape, which here is a mirrored F. In this design, two loot rooms are right next to each other, separated by a solid wall. This design has the advantage that the second loot room can be filled up with items without blocking the way in and out of the base. The disadvantage is that fewer doors separate raiders from main loot and that they can use splash damage to their advantage. Keep these design variations in mind as they make it harder for raiders to guess in which square the TC and the main loot is located. For this design we're going to use the U-shape. Here I'm using a single door for the outer wall and a double door inside of the 2x2. On the outside we add a triangle airlock. A metal shop front goes to the left, a single door to the right. With both doors open, you can fight door campers without risking them to go deep. If you plan to use the base long term, consider using double doors instead, so later you can replace them with a much more durable garage doors. If you use the base as a starter, I'd save the gears and go with the benefit of having an extra airlock. The back can house more boxes for your less important loot. I found that salvaged shelves with boxes placed in an L shape provide the best mobility. A barbecue can go next to the boxes. The research table fits nicely next to it, and you can even place another box underneath it. If you obtain one, you can even fit a locker against this wall and still walk through the gap without getting stuck. Next, we extend the base further for the outer airlock. Place two more triangles and a square foundation in front of the current exit. Close off this side with walls and ceilings. Then place a doorway to the left and wall frames everywhere else. These two wall frames will hold metal shop fronts. The other two will hold doors. Make sure that the double door opens outwards to block the entrance while it is open. Have the single door open inwards so you can close it from safety when you got killed with both doors open. The open space can be used to put down the repair bench when you need it. This type of airlock is something you don't commonly see in 2x2s. The two reasons why I added it are it adds the number of doors required to bring the raid cost up to 12 rockets and the three shop fronts allow to check a large area around the base for door campers. Let's turn towards upgrading the base to achieve those 12 rockets worth of protection. As soon as you research garage doors, replace all double doors with them. Then, upgrade the starter 2x1 to sheet metal. Don't forget the inner walls of the main loot room. The main loot room is now protected against 8 rockets from all sides. The next step is to add honeycomb. Build triangle foundations all around the 2x2 like this. Now there are two ways to fill in the walls. You can either just build the outer walls or fill in the inner walls as well. If raiders decide to blow in through the honeycomb and the inner walls are left out, they can subsequently use splash damage to get into two compartments at once. The inner walls prevent that. Here I'm leaving them out to keep the cost down and because a single layer of walls already matches the cost to a doorway to the TC. Here I'm adding the ceiling last, but it's actually easier to add it before placing the walls. Next, build yourself a way to get on top of the base. Surround the inner 2x2 with a ring of half walls. Again, if you want to protect the base from splash damage, also fill the inner spaces with half walls. And since clever raiders could backward pick them, they should be upgraded to sheet metal to be effective. As before, I'm leaving them out to keep costs down and because a single extra roof layer is sufficient to keep the TC protected from 12 rockets. 
Now that the honeycomb is complete, raiders now either need to go through one stone and one sheet wall, two stone walls and two garage doors, four sheet metal doors and one sheet wall, or four sheet metal doors and three garage doors in order to reach main loot. And voila! A simple and efficient 2x2 base design. Ideal for the start of the wipe if a 2x1 is too small for your group. May it bring you safely through early wipe. Until then, Evil Wurst out.